Well, it's the Social Club. We're going to be discussing all the hot topics this week. And we're also going to be covering MLS, which makes it sound really bad. I didn't mean to say it that way. Trust me, it's going to be exciting. Stay tuned at the end of the show. We've got a Social Club debutant, Mark Finnegan's come over from Blue Moon Rising TV to provide a Manchester City perspective. We'll be talking about the League Cup final today, which is amazing. Uh, but first and foremost, <laughs> um, we're going to be getting your questions for Ask the Club. So via the Ball Street Twitter account, we said, get your questions in for the guys here. And the first one we've got, Barry complained when he looked at the agenda that we hadn't mentioned it, but don't worry, Baz, it's here. Uh, Joe Spatcher at Spatch99 says, with Everton's new investment, where do you see the club in five years' time? Not this club. Got the social club of uh-huh. Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Vegas partying with uh, Bradley Cooper and all his mates in bikinis. <laughs> That'd be all right. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't even know Bradley Cooper. This, this is more interesting than Well, yeah, yeah, more interesting than Everton. Um, hopefully with a plan in place. Um, ground. Something, you know, ground that's not fallen down. Um, a future. Players. Better players. And trophies in the cabinet. That's it, what I hope. You must, you, you must be buzzing, though. Yeah, it, it's exciting for not... Listen, we've had, we've had a bit of a laugh over the weekend with who we might go after and, you know, do we want do we want to take Catino or not? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, we've had a laugh with, with, you know, who we could potentially go after, but the, the exciting thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the plan, is what this fella wants to do with us. We've, we've lived hand-to-mouth for so long, season to season, um, and to think that potentially the landscape has changed, just in terms of being able to progress with the ground. You know, we've, we've had more talks, with you know about grounds without actually going anywhere, yeah. that it's become a little bit uh, a little bit ridiculous. But now to think that we could potentially sit down with people and actually be able to say we've actually got a few quid here to put in for this yeah. ground instead of having the beg and bowl out and expecting public money to it, pay for it's it. It's a mad one, isn't it? Because on Mersey's side, it's been look, it's been a hot topic of conversation for years. Everton Football Club, look, don't like them, but <laughs> so I don't don't like you. But you you are a big you know a big football club. You've got a massive history behind you, and you look at and I think you look at Man City yeah. and obviously you know the, the the money that the money that's come in there. It's astonishing that this hasn't this hasn't happened before because Everton have got everything you you think you'd need. Yeah. Even to, to, be, to, to be fair, with the exception of the stadium, more than City probably had at the time of the takeover. Definitely similar clubs. Definitely similar backgrounds. I think both you know arguably Manchester. We've we've kind of lived in in the shadow to some extent of uh, Man United. Um, Everton's had more success, you know, in certainly a decade ago compared with what City have. So they, they, they kind of, yeah. Never they, forget. They, uh, <laughs> Never forget. <April. laughs> but the kind of infrastructure's there, you're right. Yeah. If investment comes in and it's it's done in the right way. We have seen examples, though, of money come in at the Premier League where it's used in a wrong way and you devalue the culture of the club. Personally, from a City perspective, I think it's enhanced us. But we've still kept our core values, you know, as a, as a club, and as fans, I think, and I think Everton will do the same. Mm. If I'm honest. What do you think, Rob? I was going to ask what you think. Are you <laughs> worried because if, if, you know what what Man City have done in Manchester? They've become like a bigger club in a way, not history-wise and that, but a bigger club Richer. as regards Richer. to win, not as regards to winning things in recent seasons. Mm-hmm. They become bigger than Man United. Are you worried that with Everton that they may become? If they've got that level of investment, <laughs> they could take over the, you know, they're no longer the noisy neighbours like what was famously said about Man City. I wasn't until you started <laughs> saying all those words. <laughs> <laughs> and now I am. Now we're sweating a bit. Yeah. A little bit. I haven't, I haven't had time to even consider it, to be perfectly honest. But now that I have, no, no, I, I, I don't know. I think we'll see. I think what Martin says is right there is that for every, for every Chelsea and Man City, there's a, there's a Malaga. Or there's a Notts County, or there's you know whatever these clubs that are promised. No, but you know promised all the money in the world. You know, but this guy, this guy, I like the company you put us in there. Yeah. Notts County, <laughs> and you know, Malaga. Malaga. This guy though, he's a football loving guy. He was at Arsenal before. Um, he he's had his money in there for quite a while. He he does love football. I don't think, um, from. All the things I've heard about him, I don't think he's going to be the sort of guy. No, it's right. In it, no, just... look, it's absolutely right. But again, let's use the Man City example of it. Let's not let's not go get into revisionism as well. There was the the faction Shinawatra period where yeah. there was a lot of money on the table at Man City there, and like I say, that mm. it depends. You've got to you've got to spend it right because yeah. I mean, look look where you were at the time. You bought well and you made you, you, relatively well, I guess. 
you know, you made yourselves a lot more exciting, but it's about having the right guy in charge. Yeah. Like Mark Hughes, good manager, you know, it will prove himself, I think, a really, really good manager in time, but he's not like an elite level. Where, where you are now when you're going to have Pep Guardiola taking over and they're some of the best players in the world is not what Man City were, even though you probably had the money to do that at the time. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you can just flick a switch and, and it all change. And that's what I mean about investment over a long period of time. I agree with you. I think this guy's there for the, certainly the medium term. Um, but the Sheikh, I think he's on a different level. I mean, he, he's not only revamped Man City, he's revamped the whole community area, you know, the housing, the regeneration of that area. And, you know, Man United fans all came and said, you know, he's a plaything, Man City are a plaything for him. And he's proved anything other than that. And that's what I'm talking about, investment right across the board. You talk about yeah. the ground, that for me is where you need to start. That's it, but that's what I'm saying. It's not so much the, the go out and buy the flashy players. That, yeah. that may come. As it increases, you don't know. It might Rubinio. Not. Yeah, Rubinio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, might, we might bring Sky's deadline day back. Yeah, 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 I doubt yeah. it. Because <laughs> Ball Street's well better now. You know what I mean? Sky had finished. Rubinio made yeah, them yeah. and broke them as well. Um, no, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a gradual <coughs> process. This is a fella, like, you know, like Robbie said, being in and around. He knows the Premier League. He knows Arsenal. He's grief frustrated that Arsenal not being able to implement things he wanted to implement. He's talking about bringing other board members on who are wealthy to try and drive the club. I think, you know, he might be able, he might be a bit frustrated with Arsenal and I'm open that he's, he's pissed off and goes, right, I'm going to make these boss so you can go, here's what you could have won, yeah. you know, and that kind of thing. I, and you that, know, it's that's one, all we can hope. It's one of them is that just kind of taking myself a step back to, to some extent, if you were going to buy a football club, Everton would be, an, I think Everton would be an amazing football club to buy. You know what I mean? In terms of, just for, for a start, the value you're getting because mm. of the, the, the nature of the way, the way Everton has gone. But just because you've got that, you've got a, let's face it, rabid fan base in the best possible way. You know, in both ways. But, you know, you've got a, a loyal, passionate fan base there who will go, you know, will, will go to the ends of the earth for the football club. You've got that heritage there. You know, there's there's a story there to be sold about Everton Football Club. It's the I don't want to say sleeping giant. I don't think he's a. I don't think I think that's a bit over overused yeah. kind of thing. Like, but you are a. It's Everton is a is a fantastic potential football club there. And go back don't, to. also, I would say regards to where City is, I think this Everton side is a lot better than what Man City side was yeah. at that yeah. even at the time of the second takeover. I think this Everton side's got a lot of potential, and with. A couple of key signings, it could go up that other level and work yeah. in hand in hand. But it's like anything; it sounds fantastic, and it's if if we as fans, I've seen a lot of our fans like nothing's happened yet, you know, and he's only got. I've seen someone say he's only got one point three billion pairs of <laughs> fortune. Yeah. I wouldn't mind having one point yeah. only yeah. having one point yeah. three billion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd spend a billill of that. On Everton, if I was doing that, I'd still have three hundred. You know, like maybe three hundred million, I think, yeah. but. You know, we we should be excited because it never gets any better than this, does it? Because this is still, yeah, we haven't fell down yeah. yet. This is still dreamland. Yeah, yeah. Can I just I mean? say, actually, I can't believe that I used the example of Notts County and yeah. Malaga and failed great. to mention Hicks and Gillette at Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the guy at Cardiff. The guy at Cardiff. Oh yeah. God, yeah. You know, changing changing, changing that blue coat, mate. Yeah. To... <laughs> That'd be amazing. This fella is steeped in Premier League history. He's an Everton. He's been so is the uh, so is the whole city owner, I think, and still wants yeah. to change yeah. the whole Tigers. The Tigers. <laughs> hey, yeah. they being Tigers. They might what if he wants here. to change this to be called the Everton Toffees? We're quite nice with our channel, though, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> actually, always thinking. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, mate. So where's Squad? We've got Barry's, Barry's talked in, in very nondescript terms about five years' time, but where, where do you see Everton in five years? Well, if, if the investment proves right, I, th I think they can be knocking on the door of the top four. You've knocked on the door of the top four before, and the squad felt thin. <laughs> you know, it felt thin when yeah, you when you actually got in the Champions League, but you've shown you can make that step up. And like you said about the fan base, to me, it's... it's Success, you know, they're hungry for it, and so to some extent, from the city perspective, now we've got some success. It's a real testimony to that core base of fans that we can build upon it. I mean, you know, mm. fifty-five thousand capacity now, and we're not far off filling it every week, but it's not quite there. So it, there's different stages. I think of once that investment starts to come through, it's whether you can then build the core and become almost sexy enough well, for people around the world to go. I'm going to go and see Everton. That was just the point I was going to make. For too long, Everton's, Everton's structure, it's just been very intrinsic of, yeah. of where we, our appeal is. It's the North-Western. 
I'll give Paul a cheap dig. I'm Wales. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before you say it, to be fair, um, you know, we haven't quite stretched out as far as Norway and all yeah. that, you know, yeah. but I think the whole thing is yes. you've got to you've got to start looking globally yeah. Yeah. because that's what it builds. Oh, well, Everton have defined themselves by, by that, haven't yeah. they? That's why all the marketing's always like, it's like if Liverpool are the club that's out here and doing all these things, we're the club that's home and the grassroots and all, and all this kind of stuff. Like, and, you know, I mean, look at, it, it comes to double-edged sword, isn't it? Like you know, what I mean, because but you know, you talk about it, you get a load of fans in that don't necessarily understand the values of your football club, but they bring loads of money and they make things it's look true. shiny, Listen, the bigger stadium and if all that. Chelsea can do it. I, when I start being going to Florida for twenty years, and when I started going, you'd see a lot of Liverpool shirts, Arsenal, Everton, you know, United. And that's flipped when I go now. Chelsea by far yeah. and above. Mm. The, oh, the, and that's because them, they've they? nailed their colours to the master in America. They've oh, gone yeah, every year for 15 years. But I, if I'm they can spread the wings, then I I've always them. said, uh, my, my dream for Merseyside is for Liverpool and Everton to get back to being the, the best two football as long as you're country, first as long as we're first and you're second it's as simple as that like. <laughs> but yeah uh, right we move on we, I've got, we've got time I think, for one more question in this <coughs> segment um, in fact two because why not just quickly one for Robbie where does the defeat to United yesterday rank in the list of painful defeats Arsenal have had at Old Trafford asks P underscore Whelan 7688 right, right up there right up there it's painful very painful not 8 too painful not eight too painful, but just nearly as bad, yeah. Was it? Yeah, 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 yeah it's nearly as bad for me. When I, when I saw their team, nah, it's, but yeah, I'm still in pain. Well, we're going to be discussing whether Arsenal have bottled it again uh, on another segment on the show, so stay tuned for that. And the last one, which I'll ask myself, uh, now that Liverpool have lost the, the, the Cup final and we never beat LVG's United, is this season over for Liverpool? Fuck off. <laughs> Just fuck off. You man. can't tell the person I've that is told it. question. Hoss underscore LFC underscore Hoss. <laughs> fuck off. Just fucking cheer. I know it's hard. I know it seems desperate at times. But if we can get Barry smiling on a the show, then anything is possible. Like, I know, the no, no, I, I can't. I, no, ask me again. In, in, in three weeks' time, our season could be over. <laughs> but we've got that three-week interim period we've got where we've play. got, you know, we could, we could be six points behind City come the end of Wednesday night. We could be, and two, two weeks, three weeks from now, we could be through to the last 16 having embarrassed Man United. And, you know, at least everything everything exists in the realms of possibility at the moment. So, yeah, so take that as a crumb of comfort. Uh, anyway, still to come on the show, uh, we have got, so what, Arsenal bottling it, of course. Uh, we're also going to be discussing the new MLS season and a whole host of other things as well. Check that out. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Ball Street YouTube channel, give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you there. 